Meghan Markle's recent visit to a Vancouver charity has left locals and the organization Justice for Girls in shock and disappointment. The Duchess, known for her advocacy for women's rights, managed to stir controversy by refusing to wear a pendant gifted by the group, deeming it cheap. This wasn't Markle's first encounter with JFG. It marked her second visit in three years. The organization, founded in 1999, holds a special status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council since 2009. Markle's initial visit in January 2020 left a positive impression, with the group presenting her a gold and diamond Welland pendant crafted by local jeweler Holly Bartlett of the Heisler tribe. The organization's co-director, Zoe Craig Sparrow, recalled the harmony of that day, stating, We all felt at ease, and I think that was a testament to the Duchess. However, during her 2023 visit, Markle conspicuously omitted the gold custom made necklace, opting to flaunt other expensive jewelry instead. This decision has fueled speculation, suggesting she may have sold the pendant, using her influence as a feminist to manipulate the market value of the jewelry received thanks to her marital ties. Markle's actions are the direct opposite of another royal figure, Catherine, who recently sported earrings gifted by the grieving mother on Mental Health Day. She knew it would mean a lot to the mother and the public in general, and so she chose to wear it. The conspicuous absence of the pendant stands as an insult to the indigenous jeweler and the girls that Justice for Girls represents. The symbolism doesn't end there. It raises concerns about Markle's potential behavior towards indigenous partners at the upcoming Invictus Games in 2025. The Duchess, seemingly avoiding the display of her engagement ring, leaves one to wonder if it's tucked away with the neglected pendant or if it's already sold. Instead, she proudly showcases a diamond pinky ring, reinforcing the perception that her every move prioritizes personal image over valuing those around her. A stark contrast emerges when comparing Markle's approach to that of the late queen, Prince Philip, and their descendants. The royal family understood the power of wearing jewelry and accessories sourced from visited places, with each piece sending a powerful message and even shaping diplomatic ties. Markle's apparent disregard for this tradition raises questions about her commitment to the responsibilities that accompany her title. This controversial visit further highlights Markle's inconsistent engagement with charitable organizations. Despite the flattering rhetoric surrounding her initial visit, there's a lack of tangible, long-term commitment. Her sporadic appearances and photo opportunities leave little room for substantial contributions or behind-the-scenes efforts. In essence, Markle's visit appears more as a strategic move to maintain a royal image rather than a genuine commitment to the cause. The absence of an invitation, radar inclusion, and reliance on a maid's call paint, a picture of convenience rather than dedication. It seems for Markle, the narrative of being still royal but independent takes precedence over meaningful, sustained involvement.